Zapraszamy. Pan prezes Robert Sobków, wiceprezes zarządu grupy LOTOS SA do spraw finansowych i pan prezes Patryk Demski, wiceprezes zarządu grupy LOTOS SA do spraw inwestycji i innowacji. Bardzo proszę o zabranie głosu i przedstawienie wyników pana prezesa Mateusza Aleksandra Bąca. Szanowni Państwo, bardzo mi miło Państwa wszystkich przywitać i przedstawić bardzo dobre informacje na temat grupy LOTOS. Tradycyjnie podzielimy prezentację na trzy części wstęp, potem dokładniejszą informację na temat segmentów naszej działalności, a potem podsumujemy to wynikami finansowymi. No i na koniec oczywiście otworzymy się na pytania do, do nas z Państwa strony. Natomiast w kilku słowach dosłownie, co się działo w grupie LOTOS i co się działo w czwartym kwartale 2018 roku. Może najpierw parę słów takich podstawowych. Ponownie kolejny rekordowy wynik operacyjny EBITDA LIFO 3,1 miliarda złotych, miliard 600 milionów złotych zysku netto. Bardzo dla nas ważny i zdrowy wskaźnik bardzo wysokiego przerobu, 10,8 miliona ton. Dzisiaj też rozmawialiśmy o tym, w jaki sposób to tak naprawdę komunikować i nasza rafineria pracuje z maksymalnymi nominalnymi mocami po, po remoncie i również po przystoju, czy po postoju po remoncie postojowym w zeszłym roku oraz dzięki instalacjom, które w tej chwili się już uruchomiły EFRY, Przerób jest bardzo wysoki i tak mówiąc być może nieco anegdotycznie pracujemy więcej dni w roku średnio no, niż, niż nasz nominał by na to wskazywał. To jest teraz 375 dni można by powiedzieć z 365 jesteśmy dostępni. Pracujemy naprawdę bardzo efektywnie i jest to wynik, który dla wielu rafinerii jest nieosiągalny. My w tej chwili jesteśmy w stanie tak działać. Widzą Państwo też co się dzieje z naszym kursem akcji z naszą wyceną. Oczywiście wiele czynników na to wpływa, no ale spółka jest, jest bardzo zdrowa i, i wyniki ma bardzo, dobrze, bardzo dobre. W 2018 roku wydobyliśmy 7,5 miliona baryłek własnej ropy z własnych złóż. Wzrósł nam o prawie 6% wolumen sprzedaży naszych produktów. Mamy już 495 stacji, nastąpiły pewne e, zmiany, jeżeli chodzi o e, samą kompozycję tych stacji, zwiększamy też e, ich jakość, wydajność e, oraz ofertę. Projekt EFRA 98% e, zaawansowania na koniec roku, dwie z trzech instalacji e, już w tej chwili są e, produkujące, jedna pod koniec zeszłego roku, druga w styczniu e, Zostały, zostały uruchomione, czekamy na ostatni element, czyli opóźnione koksowanie. Zajmujemy się również tematami paliw alternatywnych, bardzo aktywnie działamy w sferze wodoru. Tutaj dzięki finansowaniu z Unii Europejskiej będziemy budowali nowe, czy pierwsze tak naprawdę w Polsce stacje tankowania oraz instalacje do doczyszczania tego wodoru. No i w jesienią 2018 roku, co też ważne, zbudowaliśmy, czy też zelektryfikowaliśmy pierwszą trasę pomiędzy dwoma głównymi ośrodkami w Polsce, między Gdańskiem a Warszawą. Działa, uczymy się i dowiadujemy się coraz więcej na temat, na temat tego, jak, jak ten rynek elektromobilny się zachowuje. Także bardzo dobry, bardzo dobry rok, bardzo dobre wyniki. Ja też zachęcam po, po naszej konferencji do We'll have a look at the comments that we have issued, the statement of the management board about the objectives that we set for our companies two and a half years ago in December 2016 and how those targets are being fulfilled in the first uh, uh, time of the, in the first period of the strategic um, Plan. Now, fourth uh, quarter uh, 2018, EBITDA LIFO is 15% uh, increase year on year compared to fourth quarter 2017, almost 900 million floats, four years of the refining capacity. The refinery is very efficient. This is very important for us, a very important indicator net debt to LIFO EBITDA 
uh, went down to 0.6. This is one of the indicators that were very important for us. Three years ago, when we were screening the company, a company that had a very extensive investment program, the financial situation was different. We have stabilized now the company. It is stable. It's very well prepared to continue operations. What happened, and what is important from the perspective of the main investment of the fourth quarter 2018, is signing the annex to the with the main contractor of the EFRA program and uh, the deadline end of May for our FSU and the last installation of the project. The two other um, units, as I've, as I've already mentioned, are already operational. Fourth quarter 2018. This means an increase of uh, EBITDA, of LIFO EBITDA. We have a very high production, higher than in fourth quarter 2017. We can't increase it much because we are at full capacity. Nonetheless, thanks to uh, some streamlining, we were able to fine tune the results and slightly increase them. Net debt is now going down. Uh, the daily hydrocarbons production is similar to fourth quarter 2017, although we will also be having the yearly data and we have a falling trend that is uh, connected to the portfolio mix of the licenses for our uh, downstream production. Now, we will uh, be discussing the full year, but we have the highest LIFO EBITDA, 3.12 billion slightly higher than last year <coughs> and the second year in a row we have been paying out a dividend so we promised that the company would be able to pay dividends and this is something we have kept by paying a real dividend now a uh, comparison of the figures more in details, this shows us how the contribution has changed in the different segments in our result. In all the segments, in both segments basically, we see a, a slight increase, a crude oil throughput uh, 10 and a half, so this anecdote, because we have 10 and a half nominal power, we have 10,7 real, so either it means that we are producing more years, more days than a year has, or we have a more efficient infrastructure. Now, operational flow, operating cash flow, very important <coughs> in business. Y we should always uh, have a look not only at the uh, net uh, profit or accounting profit, but also the operating cash flow, very healthy, 2,3 billion billion lotus and a very important uh, element, the daily uh, production from our fields, from our deposits, it's lower, but this goes along the structure of assets that we hold, and this is a strategy we had foreseen, because we knew this year would mean a limitation in the string production. Now the macroeconomic environment. Um, I wanted to place <coughs> us in this environment and to show you how the external environment has changed compared to 2017. On the left, you see the two main elements. We have Brent and natural oil quotations. In both cases, we have an increase. This has an impact on, on the downstream and upstream. The model of the two legs works. We are very happy to have this. They balance out. One balances the other. And we have achieved equilibrium. So what we lose on one side, on the production side, due to increase of production costs, we regain uh, in the <coughs> mining fuel in the upstream. But the uh, product cracks. So prices, basically, are very important. So the products that our refinery prepares mm. and their prices. We have a significant decrease uh, compared to the assumptions we had for gasoline and for diesel, we slightly less, but nonetheless less. This is very important for the structure of our production and a slight increase in heavy fuel oil. And in the future, those uh, factors will be less important for us. Now, the forex rate, uh, the US dollar exchange rate is very important to analyze our debt, but also to discuss how we trade. 
What's important are the macroeconomic indicators that in Poland uh, still maintain at a very good level, high GDP, plus 5%, that fulfills, that confirms that we have a strong economy and we are very strongly tuned with uh, how the economy works. This is confirmed by both graphs showing uh, the diesel consumption, gasoline consumption. If we look um, at the details, the last quarters and the last quarter, namely, or two perhaps, for diesel were better than last year. The consumption of gasoline remains also at a high stable level. A healthy market, therefore, where we are very active and very efficient. The refinery works. We are extracting. We have very good operational results that confirm uh, that it can continue and remain active on the market. Now, let's have a look at crude oil. I've already commented the situation, but on the right you see the key product crack spreads and the two lines are crossing at a certain point. The purple or red line with the blue one, it shows us how the cracks have changed for gasoline and for diesel. For us, for a refinery or a refining group, the Lotus Group has a refinery that is based to a large extent on middle uh, distillates and on fuel oil. This is very good and it means we can use the market op uh, uh, opportunities that open up for us. This was an introduction and now let me give the floor to Mr. Dembski to tell us more about extraction. Thank you indeed. Um, since uh, Mr. Kavula is not here, I will play a double role. I will be discussing both upstream and downstream. But first, let me present upstream results. Uh, upstream segment in 2018 saw a slight decrease of uh, production. However, mm, the country regarding the contribution to our uh, profit, um, the upstream behaves very well. These are our product um, assets. B8 in the Baltic Sea, uh, production of uh, over 3,000 barrels per day, and B3 over 1.5 uh, uh, barrels per day. Sleipner in the Nor and Heimdall in the Norwegian continental shelf, uh, with Sleipner over 12.7 uh, barrels and two and a half from Heimdall. Um, and on the right hand side, we see our results from Geo Nafta. This is comparable to last year's results, but certainly uh, Geo Nafta has to be, uh, we have to invest more in this um, segment. In the, we are showing you the fourth quarter of um, um, 2018 and the third quarter of uh, the previous year, um, divided into crude oil and uh, natural gas. Um, and on the right hand side we see the decrease of uh, uh, lifting uh, by 11% indeed nominal terms um, 2018 compared to 2017 both in Norway and, and Poland and Lithuania we saw a slight decrease oh, sorry <coughs> but um, regarding reserves compared to the first of December 2017, we saw uh, two important events, namely increase of production from Sleipner West, uh, deposit by 4.1 million barrels and slight decrease in Heimdall, but there was also a, a, a B3 concession was um, uh, extended to 2030 and the, the, these deposits were reclassified for Poland. In the next slide we saw we show the quarterly upstream EBITDA evolution, uh, Q4 mm, uh, 2017, Q3 2018, and Q4 2018. You can see in the fourth quarter, you can see the uh, single event 633 million. That's the, um, it, that was uh, related with uh, the single events uh, um, 
we said that we are paid the compensation from uh, SBM. This was um, one of the events notified 373. Mm. In the next slide, we are showing you the operational results in the extract, uh, extracting c uh, upstream um, sector 2017-2018. As part of, as part of the decrease, uh, the regarding uh, the downstream uh, segment. As underlined by, C, uh, by my colleague, our refinery is very flexible. Uh, the 10.7 um, million of processed oil in the refinery world, it seems that you really unique number of working days of our refinery and also its flexibility is record-breaking. Um, this allows us to adapt very well to the market environment and be flexible in terms of production. So I think that today uh, this is one of uh, our, this will be our one of uh, one of our future uh, competitive advantages. Once EFRA project is completed, we will have complete uh, portfolio for our refinery. Um, volume of sales of key refining products in, the th in Q3, uh, Q3 uh, 2017, Q4 2017, and four quarters of 2018. Um, uh, the first quarter of 2018 was uh, difficult. We were gaining momentum. Uh, we maintained our uh, position in gasoline and heavy products quarterly um, downstream clean bit uh, life evolution in millions of zlotys, 547 vis-a-vis um, vis -vis, um, Q4 2017, 609 million in Q4 2018. Regarding the evolution 2017 vis-a-vis -vis, uh, 2018, this evolution that we uh, see uh, mainly in LIFO effect and in single event effects, single events, but it's also worthwhile to see, to have a look at the last position of uh, both years. Uh, something that allows us to uh, have a broader outlook on our refinery, broader perspective on our uh, refinery uh, as compared to our competitors, maybe future partners and um, Western um, refineries. Um, this margin ERMI, is shown uh, in order to identify whether or not uh, we uh, or, or chose the right products, cracks, refinery, refining margin, mm, 747 um, compared to uh, all and and uh, the ERMI benchmark seems to be showing objective and good trend in refining margins of Gdańsk refineries. Thank you. And now I'll give the floor to Mr. Sopko. Good morning. Now I will present the consolidated financial results of uh, Lotus Group. Um, this is a synthesis of processes that um, happened in Q4 last year and in entire 2018. And because those processes were beneficial, in particular Q4 was uh, uh, good for us, um, there were several factors that occurred that caused a destabilization of the market, but we were the beneficiaries of those changes. We uh, thought those changes were beneficial for us. That is why uh, the change of the model refining margin, this is the effect of the fact that our refinery is uh, built in such a way that it can adapt quickly to those processes and uh, it benefits from those processes the most. And you can see it on the, um, on the, on the chart, uh, LIFO EBITDA was 876 million last year. Um, 
compared to the previous year, the same period, Q4 2017, it's as much as 16% more. Uh, throughout the year, uh, this uh, growth was not that significant because uh, we are looking at a um, difference of 74 million zlotys. Nevertheless, we must realize several aspects. Firstly, uh, one-time events that occurred last year were beneficial for us. The sum of uh, one-time events one of s uh, was uh, uh, beneficial for us. Uh, what is more, uh, last year we were uh, in an environment of growing uh, crude oil prices. Um, the bulk of our results is obtained from downstream, from our refinery sector, in comparison with upstream, this was for us beneficial. And um, we uh, were able to find our way in this environment, and this contributed to better results uh, last year than in the previous year. Also, increasing uh, crude oil prices uh, contributed to or translated into the need to create more reserves, material reserves that we must maintain. These are obligatory reserves, and the increase of prices also uh, made us react to that financially. All those macroeconomic um, events uh, did not. Uh, were not an obstacle for us to develop a positive uh, uh, result, and you could even say that they contributed to a positive result. If you, if you look at uh, cash flows and confront that with uh, CAPEX needs, you can will also see a very positive trend. First of all, in Q4 last year, over 600 million zlotys of su financial surplus um, due to um, operational uh, flows. Uh, compared to CAPEX, it was two over 250 million more. So, of course, we realize that uh, uh, OPEX and the CAPEX uh, cash flows are not all cash flows. Nevertheless, this uh, comparison is important because it shows that we are able that from our uh, we can cover CAPEX with our OPEX. So we are comfortable. We do not have to cover CAPEX from um, uh, bank uh, loans. Uh, this is something my pre one of my predecessors mentioned, um, and we'll come back to it in a moment. Mm, this is important in the uh, uh, context of the relationship of uh, debt vis-a-vis uh, our EBITDA. All the factors, as you can see in this slide, uh, were uh, going down. Uh, this uh, is, uh, on one hand, very positive. Uh, previously, uh, the budget in this respect was uh, tight. Uh, this entailed high cost and other uh, uh, encumbrances that which are incurred when a company is using uh, loans to finance its development. Today, uh, we are in a very comfortable position because our indebtedness, uh, the net debt, um, minus um, uh, cash reserves is less than two billion. It decreased uh, two and a half times over two years, which is very positive signal. What is more, also the uh, net debt to EBITDA relationship uh, goes beyond one. Uh, this has been so uh, even last year, but it go keeps going down. And co uh, consistently, we are paying back loans uh, for um, development, uh, primarily for program 10 plus. This program increased our uh, production capacity from six million uh, barrels uh, per year to 10.5 barrels uh, per year. We went even beyond 10.5. This means we are uh, working with over 100% production capacity. Meanwhile, of course, we've also streamlined our production process um, and um, not only theoretically, we can say today that uh, our capacity is more than ten and a half uh, million 
Um, last year we've uh, processed 10.8 million, uh, so it's not just theoretically that our refinery can uh, process more than 10.5. Um, it was name reflected in the name of the program. Uh, this is, in fact, the practice. What are the consequences of those positive changes around our reef refinery in the external environment and in our refinery? We are now able to say that we have a stable financial situation. Moreover, this was already said. Last year we paid out a dividend. This was the second year in a row when our company maintained the capacity to pay out dividends. For many years we hadn't paid out dividends and now for two years consistently we keep paying it out. The level of financial reserves nowadays, so the cash at disposal and cash equivalents is almost 2 billion slot. This is a level that shows that also this year we will maintain the capacity to pay out a dividend in our corporation. Moreover, something we've already informed you about, we are now working on a long-term codified policy of uh, dividend paying in our corporation. This is one of the elements in way uh, that, that allows us to communicate with the market, to be transparent towards the market, to be open in communication. And this is um, a very good element of the lot of strategy in communication. We want to be transparent, we want to be open, we want the investments to understand the long-term dividend policy. For two years we've been maintaining this capacity to pay out dividend. The level of reserves seems to show that this year as well the dividend capacity will be maintained. We cannot yet say what the recommendations will be. It's way too early. However, the level is important enough for this to happen. So what we communicate to the market is information about the long-term strategy that we are working on to maintain the capacity paying capacity, dividend paying capacity. Now, some uh, the, the indicators that I've mentioned now are very comfortable for us, but this means we also have some space, some space to change. First of all, we can invest, we can do new investments, we can make decisions about big investments to develop our company, to grow. A few years ago, those investments have been cut to only the EFRA program. The EFRA program now comes to an end. We are almost finalizing this uh, strategy. We also have the financial space to finance more growth investment. Since we also have the capacity to implement a long-term dividend policy, we also feel comfortable enough to reorganize our structures of liabilities. We have a very good uh, relationship that to EBITDA. This gives us the possibility of restructuring, of renegotiating and creating new values that result from the work undertaken. Thank you very much. Thank you. Now it is time for the round of questions and answers. If you have questions, please raise your hand. Yes, here you go. Andrzej Kublik, Gazeta Wyborcza. Could you please explain, first of all, the reasons of reversing the payoffs for IMA? Because this reduced the EBITDA in the fourth quarter last year, what were the reasons to back off on physically? Ha did you have to reimburse the insurer to give them back the money, or was it only accounting value? The second question. Do you want all of them at once? Yes, please. EFRA now. It was supposed to be closed and uh, finalized. It was one year ago, almost one year ago. Now we have a one year delay. Could you please tell us what the loss was caused by delaying this, by loss of profit? Will the company uh, be demanding some compensation from the contractor or the insurer due to loss of profit? 
So even theoretically, I assume you have done such calculations and what would be the EBITDA, what it should have been last year if EFRA had been fully operational. This is all for now. Thank you very much. So let me um, answer shortly to uh, the impact of EFRA on the EBITDA. Well, the reversal of the result has increased the EBITDA, not decreased it. So we have increased the EBITDA. However, uh, what we see on the slide here, we have terminated. Okay, once again, this has increased our EBITDA. However, to uh, calculate the LIFO adjusted EBITDA Taking off the one-offs on the graphs, we have deducted this and this has lowered it with the level of EBITDA such in relation to adjusted EBITDA. To calculate adjusted EBITDA, we have to take away the one-offs, but the EBITDA such, this has had an increasing uh, impact. Unfortunately, the remarks made off the mic cannot be interpreted. So we are notifying the impact of the compensation that results uh, from events uh, resulting from the rig uh, in IME and um, the we have received financial means and now we have published the communication and we will be informing uh, more in depth. For SBM here offshore we've had a dispute, it has now been solved and the whole IME project uh, has uh, been brought back into the investment track. So the whole IME project from our perspective in upstream is promising and perhaps even one of the best to contribute in the future in 2020, we expect 5,000 uh, barrels from this uh, field. We have 20% in this field, let me remind you, 2 times 10 that we bought in uh, participation and we want to stay in the IMA field. Remarks not made to the mic will not be interpreted. This is our estimate, but... Uh, we are making estimates about the overhaul of the rig. The Volvo rig uh, is being now reconstructed in Polish companies. That is something that makes us happy. Repso, for instance, is an operator in this uh, deposit and has uh, contributed more and has also with AKBP uh, improved the investment. We are very active uh, in managing it. We are in the board as licensee. We participate. And we think that the deadline for IME is not threatened, so 2020 this will contribute to our upstream production significantly. Any more questions, ladies and gentlemen? You haven't answered the lost profits. Lost profits due to delays. We will be estimating that. Uh, EFRA impa EFRA's impact is in a context, in a macro context. The IMO regulation 2020. So we have very spectacular inflow and flexibility from EFRA. This has to be seen in the context of international regulation for international maritime organization and also due to the revenues of LETOS, we have become become more flexible, we have increased the volume of high margin product, mainly middle distillates. Due to that, we expect additional income. Nonetheless, the calculations are not finished. We now focus on the end of March and all hands on May, sorry, May, of course we are in March. 31st May is the deadline to finish the project, all hands on deck, and annexes signed with the contractors also have uh, been the subject of very long difficult negotiations. Other refineries follow the same way, basically. EFRA means we have an additional product we, didn't, we didn't have, post-petroleum coke, and this is going to be 60,000 tons. 
jest synergie z tym związane być może there are some synergies rozwoju biznesu w tym zakresie there are some possibilities in business development in this field cooperating with Oxbow company but also penetration of new forms and new ways of using this post refining coke it's uh, used in calcination but also in other alternative fuels so we are really working hard on using this Product. This is probably a novelty in Poland. We will have a new product that can be a flow of income, an alternative flow of income for the lot of people. for sale, but we are waiting for the quality of the coke. And now the content of sulfur is the key indicator. So the then we'll see the crude oil, the blending, the mix, the sulfur data. We expect to maintain the parameters that were assumed at from the beginning. Nonetheless, what we get from the market, especially from uh, our competitor Exxon in Antwerp, that is notifying now a lot of problems with having good quality of post uh, uh, ref a refinery coke and uh, we are very cautious here however we discuss now this with our customer and we see the possibility of uh, reversing this product perhaps to polish market or other markets by creating new products so this type of coke is high caloric um, must higher calorific value than uh, coal and can be blended with other products, for instance in calcination, in the steel industry, in steel works, but also in other applications. We uh, will be having more negotiations and talks. We now have someone who is ready to take it over from us. That's a lot of volume in our refinery and a big problem for this coke, a post-refinery coke, to be transported to logistics center. Yes, Magda Graniszewska, the floor is yours. Magda Graniszewska, Polish Business. I have a question concerning extraction. B8 and the platform, the rig, uh, the deadline has been moved again. Why is that? And also, how real is the new deadline in the report? The second is about B4 and B6 deposits. I see there are some decisions that are now being delayed about those fields. Am I right? And what are the reasons? And the last question is about the position of CEO in Lotus Upstream. When will you fill this position? Thank you very much. Yes, thank you for those questions. First of all, B8. Yes, I want to tell you, as well, perhaps that didn't uh, sound right, but B8 is about intensifying extraction. 3,000 barrels a day on average. It's a deposit on the Baltic Sea, and therefore we think it's a good contribution, considering. We want to increase extraction up to 5,000 thousand barrels in the perspective of some future time. We have been communicating to the market some delays due to designing pro problems uh, that happened at the early stage of the project, nonetheless the construction of the rig itself, so the platform itself I can say is now undergoing some tests about leveling the platform. The platform is ready, the product is ready. Uh, we have now finishing work, we have some tests. The level is above 90% of fulfillment. We are now uh, thinking in terms of B8 deposit, some uh, uh, problems connected with the initial mistakes that happened during designing at an early stage. The deadlines we gave you are not threatened, according to us, so end of 2019, and full contribution at the end of 2021. Nonetheless, I assume here we have to be very cautious because the project must be very well identified and we want this platform to be in the future, the beginning of the road towards a very good business on the Baltic Sea. As we believe there are lots of reserves and lots of opportunities, 
Natomiast chyba trwają jeszcze negocjacje z kandydatem. It seems uh, well the um, the negotiations in progress uh, with the candidate. Um, so please wait a little bit. I believe um, this week there will be a uh, communication about it, an announcement. Uh, once we um, once we agree with the candidate, this is a person with a lot of experience. Um, inside a lot of uh, group, we have a uh, innovation um, innovation sector but we don't have an upstream unit um, it's his it's historical but if you look at uh, the structure of our uh, group uh, we have two group uh, two uh, legs and we have um, unlike all and we have two legs in upstream and downstream in upstream we have uh, the uh, prospect uh, prospect um, uh, uh, unit and uh, mrs. Levchinska is uh, part of our new team we are building um, a team to uh, uh, develop um, upstream uh, acquisitions. Since upstream brought nearly contributed uh, nearly one billion to our pr uh, revenues, this is one of the things we should uh, really uh, consider seriously. We are see our opportunities in um, cross-border uh, uh, investments in the UK and the uh, Norwegian continental shelf. And the last question before B6, our partner there is the Berkshire Hardway is our partner and uh, Coal Energy, uh, Warren Buffett's company. Um, there are there is no stalemate there, but the problem, uh, the project uh, occurred uh, serious problems with uh, uh, the uh, alignment of the pipeline, but uh, we are nearly uh, over this obstacle. Uh, we expected the FID in 2019, nearly 5 billion uh, cubic meters of natural gas that we are going to lift. Mm. And we are working on it because today the gas uh, after uh, turmoil in the market is value in itself. Um, refinery is used for downstream production. Maybe it, it can be another alternative vehicle to, param uh, to parametrize uh, the uh, benefits, uh, the, the profits of uh, the refinery and to increase our refining margin. So we indeed in 2019 will be the key to manage uh, the Baltic Sea. Uh, we are keeping an eye on uh, the investment dates, on the progress, and I believe we'll enter 2020 with well-developed uh, um, Baltic mm -hmm. assets. Alicia <coughs> Ptak, Reuters. What is the stage of negotiations with uh, Orlen and when can we expect any um, official in info on that? Thank you for the question. I will uh, step back a little. We are not negotiating with Orlen because we are the object of the transaction rather than a partner in it. But I can tell you what we are doing and um, what is the result of um, communication which is public. Uh, last year, PK and Orlen uh, launched a uh, price estimation process vis-a-vis uh, -vis Lotus Group and um, PK and Orlen confirms that uh, that the process is in progress. Uh, at the same time, a discussion was started uh, uh, between all and the European Commission uh, from the communication of the Commission in November. They've uh, submitted a working application with the European Commission and um, from the press I know that they are in progress of talks with the European Commission um, regarding measures that are usual, usually part of such transactions. And the last piece of information which is publicly in, uh, available is that um, the Commission decision is expected in June this year. So this is the process in a nutshell on our part. Um, we're working within the right, uh, confidentiality uh, regime um, based on um, measures which are used uh, for uh, assessment. Um, we will are providing information in compliance with all the uh, respective laws and the prog um, project is 
moving as planned. Mr. Kublik, Andrzej Kublik, Gazeta Wyborcza, właśnie w tym kontekście. Andrzej Kublik, Gazeta Wyborcza, in this context of you being the object or subject of the transaction. Mr. Sopkov uh, said that uh, the company has an opportunity open to uh, make uh, large investments, uh, which possibly uh, in the context of a changing owner of the company. Do you consider uh, independent investments without consultation with the owner? Aren't Aren't you concerned that this or future owner will block uh, one of your investments? Isn't it so that the negotiations uh, paralyze certain opportunities for lo uh, for Lotos? Also, in the context of Ephra, you know, do you not have a feeling that this Italian contractor who has a first go at this type of uh, investment um, is uh, acting to the benefit of uh, Olin because Lotus? Uh, um, uh, Lotus price may go, may go down, uh, diesel is uh, necessary in Poland, you can't be doing more of it. So, um, in other words, the full appraisal of uh, uh, Lotus value with EFRA will be known only once it is known whether or not the uh, owner will change. So, it's a question of um, uh, price appraisal. Um, share price. So there are some events that uh, paralyze Lotus and uh, lower its uh, potential value. Since I was indicated with your pen, uh, I will give you an answer. It's actually a good thing. Um, in mid this year, we want to complete this investment, and Orlen communicates that it's in progress uh, in of negotiations with the European Commission, and the end of June is also mentioned by Orlen. So obviously, we'll be speaking about the uh, investment space, which has been created already. Um, investments will be mm, analyzed uh, in our cooperation in the second half of the year, so that's lucky coincidence. But to speak about lowering of uh, the value of our cooperation as a result of extension of one of uh, the investment projects, at the same time, in a situation where our mm, company uh, Experience 60% uh, increase in prices seems to be premature not to use more um, profound words. So this is an answer I can give you regarding this space. We've created the space, uh, we are about to finish uh, the, one of the investments, uh, it will coincide more or less these two processes are not correlated. Um, it, you said that Italians act to the benefit of uh, all, and this is, uh, well, I wouldn't say that these processes are uh, coincide in time. We are operating in an environment which uh, is beneficial to our cooperation. This is something I mentioned in my statement. Uh, changes in the market, which many co which many companies perceive as negative, this is something we benefit from uh, because of our structure of uh, uh, organization, structure of uh, profits, uh, of, be of revenues, and of our daily work. With we have, in nominal terms, we have 10.5. Uh, capacity. Meanwhile, we are capable of processing 10.8 million. Uh, yeah. Of course, uh, we are uh, investing and will keep on doing, uh, do, doing it. Uh, we don't have impact on the synergy. In fact, we are uh, the object rather than uh, an active partner, uh, but we are uh, uh, acting with uh, due diligence 
um, rozumieniu paradoxically, zmian na rynku. Uh, Proszę, also in the context of future uh, changes in the market. Our refinery is a benchmark or a model for our for other refineries. It was uh, organically developed. It's located at the seashore, uh, but uh, we also keep track on uh, keep a close eye on environmental laws. Uh, the fact that we are so flexible uh, with adjusting to the laws uh, provides us future um, advantages and um, our investments mean that we will focus on alternative um, sources of revenue. Um, in other words, today we are uh, paying relatively small uh, environmental um, penalties, but uh, thanks to EFRA will achieve uh, sulfur-free fuels and will also increase our revenue stream from other investments and the future investments which will continue in this same vein will make us more profoundly present in high margin um, revenue streams and high margin uh, products. That is why we position ourselves in hydrogen in uh, CNG, uh, we're building a small scale LNG, we have electromobility and stations that will uh, be uh, uh, increased in the, as part of the blue trail. So the, there are no threats there. Mm, in 2019 we'll communicate a very significant important investment uh, it seems that uh, HBO is hydro cracking uh, oil block uh, will uh, be the most probable option this was uh, something which was uh, communicated to the market but this is the next logical step in our refinery investments which will close up the portfolio of high margin products The question was asked outside of the mic, I'm sorry. The traditional answer, there is a standard regulating the quality and we keep to this standard. Do we have any more questions, ladies and gentlemen? Here you go. Yes, sir. And I have a question about the emission fee you will have to pay. Sorry, no. I have a question about the structure of imports. What is the indicator of crude oil uh, refined by Lotus that comes from outside of Russia? I understand you are asking about the share of non-Russian crude oil in our production. Well, we are diversifying uh, successively and we are trying to be more flexible, more diverse. The investments that we have means we will ha be more flexible in refining crude oil. We have 30% of oils other than Russian in our mix, so around 30% non-Russian oil refined in our plant. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, any more questions? I see no more questions. Therefore, I would like to thank you for your presence. Thank you for having met us. And I invite you for informal talks after the meeting. Thank you very much.